I'm heading out through to the east of Lyme Regis. I'd love to collect another beautiful ammonite block just like this one, but we'll see. I'm going to take the fossil collecting tools with me, the sieves and shovels to work with on the beach. Here at my workshop, you can see the grapes are really growing and that's because we're right in the middle of August and I'm going to take you out and we'll find some fossils hopefully today. Let's see what the tourists have left me at low tide along the Jurassic coast. I'm just going to my metal framed rucksack to grab some of the sieves and plastic shovels and eye goggles and a little hammer to tap at the right rocks if I indeed find any of the right rocks on this little fossil collecting journey at low tide. Here are some of the wonderful finds I've made on the 2008 slip from the old Victorian bottle dump that washed down onto the beach. Some lovely old marbles there that you can see, some homemade clay pottery, all sorts of treasures and curiosities. Let's go sieving for Susie and Trudy and Lawnside School. I would really like to find more of this Arneoceros material. That would really make my day, but uh, you've just got to go out and try your hardest and hope for a bit of luck. I'm looking for some lucky signs around Lyme Regis. A couple of magpies would do, something like that. I'm looking at the map here, showing you where I'm heading through to the east of Lyme Regis. I'm heading down towards the 2008 Lyme Regis landslide and I'm going along the Marine Parade. You can see these lovely ammonites preserved in limestone set into the wall along the Marine Parade as you go down this section of the coast. And then I'm gonna head out past the Mary Anning statue through towards where I'll look at low tide for the fossil finds. The tides rather well in here at the moment so I might give her a little time in town still and let the tide go out just a little bit more. An hour before low tide fossil collecting and an hour after low tide fossil collecting is usually the best method. There's the Mary Anning statue standing up proud in this lovely sunny weather in August. We've had a real mixed bag of weather this particular month. I've let the tide go out and you can see down there into the distance along church cliffs. One or two people are substantially near the cliffs and that's very dangerous. I'm getting ready to employ the sieves currently along this stretch and I'm going to look on the beach in areas where iron pyrite is prevalent and I'm going to look for patches of the pyrite or areas that just look good where fossils could wash down into pockets and I'll sieve that material looking for the fossil finds. Let's see what I get in this potting sieve, a green potting sieve that you can use to sieve through the seawater and try and get the little ammonites preserved in fool's gold. Well, I've picked up a piece of crinoid stem and you can see the crinoid there is slightly rusty and I'm looking in the rock pool and you can see I've just pulled out a big piece of metal it's heavy. Hopefully the iron pyrite ammonites are congregating there in the iron pyrite fields because the iron pyrite ammonites are heavy, the pyrite's heavy, the metal's heavy. It's all washed into certain pockets on the beach, but the crinoids turn a bit rusty because of that bit of metal. And now I've spotted another fossil. Did you spot it before me? A little ammonite preserved in the fool's gold.
I've got the iron pyrite ammonite that I have just found in one hand and there's a plastic model to show you what an ammonite looked like back so many moons ago back in the Jurassic period and you can see the tentacles that that sea creature had and a siphuncle to jet out water to make it propel backwards through the seas and a sharp beak in between the tentacles a bit like a parrot's beak so quite a substantial creature the ammonite grew up to be I overheard someone saying that the tourists have taken all the fossils. Well, that's untrue because of the huge amount of erosion that goes on along these areas. The fossils are always washing out of the mudslides by the sea's actions. See if you can spot this ammonite fragment that I can see in amongst the rocks. These little fragments are fun to find and you can find arneosterous specimens like this broken into pieces on the beach. Here is the 2008 Lyme Regis landslide. It's gradually wearing away with the attrition of the sand and sea. The sea is hitting it and breaking away the mud and boulders from the surface, bringing it onto the beach. Here's another piece of beef calcite ammonite and also to a piece of pottery on the beach. Nothing like the lovely finds I've made and brought back like the marbles. I'm going to head through towards the Mary Anning statue and then up to her resting place and the actual window in the church of Mary Annings. And there is an ammonite on the beach. There's the Mary Anning statue. I'm heading up towards the church and I'm going to show you the way that you can go and see her resting place in the church yard and then also to the window the Royal Geological Society of London put in for her after she passed away and she did not know about this window so that's quite sad they gave her some accolade with the window but she had already passed away at that point she despaired of all humanity saying everyone had racked her brains and stolen her ideas when she came to pass away so she'd had a hard life fossil hunting doing the work on the beach and here's her window a little window in the church for everyone to see. A lot of people don't know about that actual place. I wish I'd found a few more fossils today. Mary Anning would have found a lot more fossils than I certainly did, but it's still fun finding something. Here's what I dreamt of finding. Maybe again next time. Thanks for watching.